Roll three, scene one, take one. Welcome, Lionel, to Pemphigare Valley Woods. Very um, nice to be with you. Thanks for coming along to see this really interesting tree who's got plenty to say. Right. Yes, the idea of tree spirits goes back a long way and all across the world. Um, the Tamil name for the Palmyra tree was Panai, and there are those who live in that area in the Far East who actually believe that these tree spirits called the Panai are there. And there are others called the Kadambas who are also living out there in the other side of the world. And here we've got one in Pantelagare. Yeah. And would you like to tell me all about it? Well, yes, definitely. Um, uh, about a year or so ago, uh, we'd received uh, contact from uh, paranormal investigators who were really keen to, uh, to do some investigations in the woods, and they'd heard some stories, and uh, went on a walk round, and their sensitive, their medium, mm -hmm. said that this tree probably was housing one of these spirits, uh, an, an elemental. Right. right. And um, so they wanted to add it to their ghost walks that they do, and um, I attended one of the ghost walks and it um, had plenty to say. Right. And what do you think it was? Well, it was very unusual because um, they put out a number of different uh, little balls which uh, glowed or, or shone um, when there was a sort of spiritual energy nearby them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they started to ask the tree some questions because it's a very old tree. Yes. Um, they were saying things like, you know, how old are you, you know, um, are you this number of years old? And we worked out that it had been there in sort of medieval times. Mm. And we asked about an, an old legend around here, or, or a story, which is related to the battle that happened in Gower in 1136, just down the road. Right. And we asked the tree if it was here when the wolves from that battle were here. Now, the wolves are related to a story about the battle. The Normans were patrolling the area, and this was one of the Welsh great victories. Right. The Welsh ambushed them at uh, Garngork, just down the road, about half a mile away. Mm -hmm. And it was on New Year's Day in 1136. Right. The, the Welsh were completely victorious, so much so that the Normans couldn't take their dead off the... Um, the ground right. and it was a frozen day and the Welsh poetry about it talks about how the local woods um, emptied of wolves right. and uh, came and ate the bodies so Whoa. we thought it would be an interesting question yes. and uh, so we asked the spirit in the tree was this tree here then mm -hmm. and it said no but it said my parents were <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so it's a pretty old tree with indeed. plenty to say indeed uh, it's very interesting when you were talking, going back to those dates, that in the time of Charlemagne, there were laws passed. Now, this was in 1227 at the Synod of Trier, and they decreed that the worship of trees and the spirits within them was forbidden. And in, uh, I said earlier still, in Charlemagne's time, in 1782, he passed a law saying that they were not to worship the tree spirits. Oh, right. Okay. So way back at almost the same time as the great battle there of the Welsh. Yeah, and uh, the interesting thing is we, we were here at one in the morning having this conversation with the tree. As we finished up, we had a, uh, we had a look round and I was there with the investigators. And just in this hole, we were looking in. Yes. And you wouldn't believe it. The largest toad about this size came Good scuttling Lord. straight out of the hole. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and that had been his, obviously, it, yeah, his, his, home, his home or his den. Or, I'm not sure you what never you know. Could... He could be a familiar of the tree. He you could be know. indeed, yes. <laughs> yeah. Lovely to talk to you again. And, uh, yeah. Well, I think you've got me three times this afternoon. Yes. Yeah. That's a, a very I, great I can't pleasure. wait to the Suffolk um, story because we can talk about... Yes, we, we can.